Hello and welcome to Vinny munching away, stealing food out of my pocket. <laughs> um, so I would tell you that once I was talking to someone and he went into my carrier bag and ate half of a sandwich that I'd bought from the petrol station. Didn't even know he was doing it. I, I, I heard him doing something and I was just chatting away ignoring him and the lady I was talking to said look what he's doing and honestly he was just eating it but he'd ripped it open ripped the packet open ripped the bag I mean <laughs> I could not believe it so I just said well you might as well have the rest of it he said no thanks he didn't want he didn't want the other half of the sandwich because it was two bits and he'd eaten one. No. Well, it might have been a wrap, actually. Uh, anyway, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. My website's jasonnewland.com. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And... Haven't made a recording since the 6th of October. It's now the 10th. It's only four days. It seems an age. That's weird, isn't it? It was Sunday, I think. Sunday's papers, I think I did. Sunday papers. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's Thursday now. It's in the afternoon. Oh, I've got so much to tell you. So much. So, the... Well, blimey. The first thing is, I haven't even started my university course. And it officially started on Saturday. I've not even done the first week, the pre-week course yet. I'm well behind. I need to get on it. But, I have been so busy distracting myself that... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyway, so basically what happened is this. I I thought to myself, every now and then, right, every now and then, I just, you know, that like I have to cancel stuff that I can't afford to pay, and it just, it bugs me a little bit. Just, you know, stuff that I use to do this. So I had to cancel chat GPT. GPT? GPT? Yeah, I'll... I'll reinstate it in a couple of weeks but I just and I start thinking do I want to do I really want to be around here forever do I not forever but you know would I be nice to move somewhere else or have a like a nice life and so uh, so what I did is I reinstated or re up republished the patron page and spent a few days setting that all up and it was just a pound a month that was it or well, a dollar a month and then I launched it this morning posted it on Facebook I had one person or one per two people joined one deleted their joining so they joined and then they unjoined another person I think Samantha joined so I what I did is I decided to get rid of the Patreon page I've refunded the money that uh, for Samantha I think it's Samantha who joined I can't get access to the details now because I've unpublished the page deleted it so I've un I've uh, uh, yeah so I've refunded that. It was like one dollar. It was one dollar, but I think that's like two dollar you two Australian dollars I think. So I and took the posts off of Facebook, and the reason why I got rid of it is just I don't want to charge for anything. I don't, 
it's yeah i want to i want to i do want to live a decent life and i'd like to perhaps go traveling and just you know but at the same time this is a free service and i want it to be free and that's kind of yeah whenever i move away from that i feel ill <laughs> to be honest physically ill so um now that i've gone back and got rid of it i feel better so what i'm going to be doing what i'm going to be doing oh yeah what i what i had was i was going to have the patreon for so you could listen to the recordings with music because now with the normal podcasts i just do them without music now from now on that's what was my plan well i've decided to keep the podcast that i've been building for the last year or so and there's thousands of recordings on there and it's now it's it's basically it's a podcast called sleep hypnosis with music and i posted the link on my well basically you only get the link if you join my facebook group so I, i'm not going to promote the ones with music with background music uh, but i will post them on my facebook group which is jason newland's boring group all the other stuff will just automatically be uploaded to my the podcasts so if you're following me on let me bore you to sleep or if you follow on on me sleep hypnosis deep sleep hypnosis or whisper hypnosis or whatever podcast you're listening on those will be updated but they will all be without music so there will be a version without music just a normal standard recorded like this with just him making weird noises in the background then there will be a five hour version without music and a 10 hour version without music and they will have uh also like counting down affirmations body scan stuff like that so i'll be talking for the whole five or ten hours and the ones with music i will post on the facebook group jason newland's boring group so they won't i won't be publicizing those or posting them anywhere else so yeah that's it really also i will make available all of those recordings the ones without music and the ones with music they will all be available to download in the future all future ones will be available okay so starting from this one for example on my website you'll be able to download all of the recordings for this so the one without music five hour without music ten hour without music and then the one with music five hour with music ten hour with music they're all going to be available to download for free on my website <sighs> that made sense to me i hope it made sense to you i really 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 hope so i do i do i do so yeah that's it really that's ah i can relax now oh I'm tired. I'm tired. Now, the reason I have done this is mainly because I keep getting hassle about having music on the podcast from the podcast hosts. So, to make it easier, I've deleted. I don't. Start, I don't want to go and lose my podcast again, like I did last year so this is the best way to do it and then just keep my podcast with music completely separate and as i said i'll make them available on my podcast on my facebook page uh, there won't be i won't have anything like that on my website either just on the facebook page so yeah um Ah. 
I kind of feel a bit relieved because oh shit, we're over there now well it's weird isn't it because I was going to say now I can get on with my university course but what have I done I started making this recording because I will do anything to avoid studying which is weird I don't quite know what that's about I'll be okay once I start. I just need to get started, really. And just get caught up. Oh, I've missed making recordings, which is weird. There was a certain routine I had where I would make the recording afternoon or evening. And then when I get up in the morning, I'd edit it. And, you know, do all the production part of it and upload and share and make an image and all that stuff. And I kind of miss doing that for the last few days, really. I'm sort of waking up and I'm coming into the living room and sitting down and looking at the computer and just, yeah. Kind of missed it. So, yeah, I need to get back into that routine. Oh, baby. I think I'm due my afternoon nap very shortly. So, yeah, everything's all right. It's, it's got it's turned a bit cold. A bit cold. A bit, it's been very rainy and a bit cold. And... For some reason, Vinny likes to hassle me to go O-U-T when it's raining. Especially last thing at night. He will refuse. Like, I took him out there in the garden. It wasn't late. Like quarter, to, quarter to 11, maybe 11 o'clock. Took him out there. He refused to do a wee-wee. And it was raining. I was getting wet. All I wanted to do was just get back inside and go bye byes but no he refused to do a wee wee now he might have done one and I couldn't see there's a chance he might have done one but he didn't do a proper squat like 8 to 10 seconds emptying everything so I thought he was going to hassle me early hours of the morning to take him out but he didn't but he did two previous nights earlier as well, he did. But last night he didn't. So, bless him. Bless his little, little, little ginger, ginger head. So he's lying down and he's basically got his, the back of him pushed against my leg. I'm just stroking him. And he's spread out all across the city. So he's quite liking this, and you've been quite liking this, yeah. I'll tell you one of the other things, well, that was loud, wasn't it? I'll tell you one of the other things, the reason why I got rid of the uh, Patreon is because I make these recordings, uh, some of them for people that are maybe unwell, and the idea that someone has to... I know, a dollar is... Is, you know... It's, it's not, not a huge... Huge chunk of cash, I know. It is if you ain't got it. Uh, and I've been there... Plenty of times. Wow. I remember once I was working... And I was a counsellor. So I was actually working hard. And... I think I was waiting for a check to clear from because I was self-employed so you know it wasn't quite as simple as just getting paid monthly and I went to the bank and I had 12 pence 12 pennies in the bank and I was and this was like during the day well the banks are open only, only open during the day I'm walking down the street laughing out loud don't know what people would have thought about me. 
Couldn't believe it. 12 pence. I had no money for anything. No food, no milk, no anything. <laughs> and I went home and just like... Yeah, it wasn't a good night actually, to be fair. That, was, that wasn't a good day. I shouldn't really laugh at myself on this one because, yeah, it wasn't good. But it was still just like... Really? And I've been like that before. And... Really, I need to remember those times because it's not like that anymore. Doesn't mean it couldn't go back like that, and I hope it doesn't, but... Yeah, i would be short of money for a little while, but... I'm not in that situation where... I literally had, you know, just didn't have a penny. Well, 12 pennies. What can you buy with 12 pence? And you can't draw 12 pence out because you'd have to close. I'd have to have closed my bank account for 12 pence. And I needed the bank account, <laughs> basically. I remember I tried to, uh, tried to get paid before Christmas once. And I think Christmas, I think, was on the when, maybe the Thursday. And so I was in mind. I got on really well with the people that worked in mind, even the, the person that did the checks, especially the person that did the checks. Me and him got on really well. And so I went in there to see if he could do my check so I could put it in. And it was worth about a thousand pound. So, so it had been a busy, a busy previous month. And I'm waiting. And I'm waiting. And I know that the bank closes, I think, at five o'clock. And it was four o'clock. So I've been in there like an hour. Now, he's a lovely bloke. And he, you know, I wasn't the only person he had to do. And he is very busy. So I'm kind of talking to him but at the same time probably distracting him if I hadn't talked well if I hadn't been there he probably would have got done quicker anyway he got it and up this it got to half four now the mind office wasn't actually that far away from the bank it was like one down one road cross the road up and then turn left and you're at the bank it's you know, it's it's a 10 minute walk slowly. If you walk slowly, it's a 10 minute walk. Fast, you could probably do it in, well, me. Do I do fast? Anyway, um, he gave me the check, handed it in my hand. You know, we were both excited. We had a little cuddle. It was Christmas. But then I thought, I've literally got minutes to get to the bank. So... I run. Now, I'm not really built for running. I'm built for laying on a beach, you know, waiting for people to come and push me back into the sea. That's what I'm built for. I'm not built for running. But I had to get there. I had to get to the bank because if I didn't get to the bank in time, the money wouldn't have cleared for Christmas it was literally that that kind of you know and I had to get it in otherwise the money wouldn't have cleared because the amount of days it took and I wanted the money to clear by Christmas Eve because I ain't going to do it Christmas Day is it so I had to be done by Christmas Eve otherwise I wouldn't be able to buy any presents for anyone I wasn't I wouldn't have been able to afford to visit my dad never mind anything else just the train fare would have been out of the, out of, uh, the question so, I run. I got this check in my hand, and that thousand pounds was almost like a a million pounds to me at that time. I just I run, and I run, and it's one of those moments when I'm kind of running across the road. I'm looking, of course, I'm looking, but I don't know how much, how well I could have stopped if there had actually been some traffic coming, because I was really. When I run, maybe not so much now, I don't know, I've not tested it, but 
I run with my legs far behind my upper body. Uh, so weird. It's almost like, can you imagine, you know, if this really, if there was a big wind and you could leap, I've never been able to do this by the way, but especially not now, but you can, if you lean against the wind and some people can do it and it kind of keeps you almost like your head, I'm not, I'm not saying that when I'm running that my head is inches from the ground in front of me. I'm not that bent over, but I'm definitely forward because my upper body is much bigger than my lower body, which means it's harder to stop. It happened when I was doing Taekwondo one day. Um, we were running from one side of the hall to the other and it was like a competition. I was last. <laughs> I was going against like eight and ten year olds. And there's no way I was going to be able to keep up with them. And the problem is. I think they'd already run there. Hit, hit the wall and then run back. And I'm still running towards the other wall. And they're cheering me on. What they don't realise. Is I can't stop. I'm literally trying to stop running but I can't and I slam into the wall and I was stuck there I was stuck <laughs> like one of those octopuses from the 80s you know ones that stuck and they'd like slide down the wall that was me and like a cartoon and they thought it was funny I mean you know it's funny now at the time it was kind of funny but my body didn't find it funny it was painful. So, you know, stopping has not always been good because I'm I'm too far ahead with my upper body. I mean, put it this way, if I was running a race and there was, a, a you know, a cord or tape, do you, you, you hit the tape when you pass, cross the finish line, I'd have an advantage over everyone else because I'd, I'd be hitting the tape with my belly five minutes before everyone else even before my, before my feet got there. It's just, anyway, that's enough about me being fat. So I'm running towards the bank. And I'm looking at my phone, because I don't want to watch since the 80s. So I'm looking at my phone to see what the time is. And it's like, it's literally probably two minutes to five. And I'm looking, and you see there's someone, um, it's like, sometimes they close the doors early, like, please don't close the doors early. Anyway, I see the lights are still on in there, and I run towards the door. There's some steps, and then there's a glass door. I managed to trip, and I broke my foot on the steps. Now, I didn't know I'd broken my foot or fractured my foot, whichever it was. All I knew, I was in absolute agony. But I had to get that check into, onto the counter, over the counter rather. So I just had to stop the screaming and the howling. And I made my way in there and I was, I mean, to be fair, it got their attention. And I handed it over and they just like, okay, and it was done. And as it turned out, I went to the hospital uh, because for, it was, I mean, it was black, blue, black, purple, you name it. It was like all kinds of weird, it was, was that like a Picasso, but I don't know what Picasso is like. I didn't have weird eyes. Well, I do know what Picasso is like. Wonky eyes and a nose near the ear and... Anyway, that's my foot. My foot was, it was very, very, oh, a little bit mangled. And, but it was like the top of my foot, like from the ankle to the toes. So the actual toes, I don't think, I think the toes were okay, but it was the top of the foot. Really, really, really hurt it a lot. So I leave it for the day. I leave, you know, leave it until, so this is Friday. 
Saturday, Sunday, I think I'm, I, I might have set, I might have gone up to the hospital on Saturday because of the pain. And I got off the bus and I went into, and, but I got off at the wrong place. Well, I, th I thought I got at the right place because it's like a walk-in clinic. Went into the walk-in clinic and they said, well, it's, you've broken something, you need to, it's clearly damaged. So yeah, I know that. I didn't come in to, for you to admire my toenails. And she said, that's very rude. We're a very busy place here. We save lives. We don't need your ignorant comments. I was like, okay, I'm sorry, I was joking. None of that happened. So I, I had to walk for a good half an hour to get to the other part of the hospital. Probably would be a 15 minute walk normally. And it was so painful. Oh, hobbling, hobbling I was. And I got there eventually, and they said, "Yeah, it's, it's you've fractured it or broken it, but uh, the only way we're going to know for sure is if we X-ray it, and you'll be here for pretty much all day to get that done. And it's not really anything we can do. You just have to keep it off, keep it as elevated off the ground if you can, and just be careful with it, and it'll just heal naturally. It wasn't deformed. There's no open fracture or anything." There's not really anything you can do. Your ankle's okay. It's just the foot itself. And so I thought, okay. Do I want to spend nine, ten hours in hospital? Or just... Because it wasn't damaged at the bottom. Well, it might be damaged at the bottom. I don't know. I think it was just the top. But, ow, man. I mean, they might have put it in a, a some kind of plaster, but... I just didn't fancy waiting, being in there, just, uh. so I came home, I think I must have got a bus, you can get a bus from the hospital, but I didn't know I was going to be going to the hospital, I thought I was going to the walk-in centre, which is where I originally went, and I got the bus to that place, which was near the hospital, so I came back, and... was it I think if I cor if I remember correctly I can check this I can actually check this so this would be 2000 and do, 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 2012 2012, I'm pretty sure. So, do, 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 2012, 2012, December, December 25th was, was it 2012 or was it 2011? I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure. 2013, 14, 15. I think it was 2000. So it, Christmas Day. So I must have done it. it. I might have the days wrong then. So. Oh, it doesn't really matter. It's, anyway, it, however it worked out. I had probably three days until Christmas Eve. So this might have been, instead of the Friday that I did it, it might have been a Wednesday or Tuesday. I don't know. But it was, you know, just a few days. Bef it was the, the, the cut-off date to get it into the bank to actually be, uh, to transfer it and for it all to be processed. So I... Yeah, I travelled up to... I couldn't wear socks. And I travelled up to see my dad. And I think I had to get a taxi to the train station. And I was hobbling. And honestly, I couldn't walk. 
I just thought it was really, really difficult. And I, I had to, I've never done this before, I had to ask for someone to come and collect me from the house. Because my brother's got a car, my dad's got a car, so can, can someone please come and get me? Because I can't, I can't do the walk. It's either that or I'll get a taxi. And they came and got me. And then uh, gave me a lift home. Not home, but back to the train station. In fact, might have even given me a lift home, to be fair. Because my first, I don't remember 100%. Yeah, I'm not sure. Blimey, the amount of bones I've broken over the years is ridiculous. Honestly. I mean, it's just since I've lived here. I broke my wrist when I fell out of the bath when I first moved here. That was my left wrist. So it didn't affect every aspect of my life. Uh, it was, what else? I broke my hand. I broke, in one year, a couple of years back, I broke at least one rib or fractured a rib, so anyway, and I also God, heard that go, blimey, and also um, I broke a couple of toes, and then the week I got Vinny, or the week after I got Vinny, fell down the stairs, fractured uh, my back in two places, and just before yeah, just before Christmas, I damaged my heel, so I was I was like on the front door, so jammed in between my heel and the metal bit, so I could hardly walk for about three weeks. And then I kicked the wall in my sleep, and I broke my toe, my big toe. I really, oh man, that was. And then I. Yeah, that was it. I did it again a couple of weeks ago. I kicked the wall. This time I didn't break it. I was so, so relieved. I tell you. Blimey. Right, what's this? PayPal. What is this? Uber payments. Okay. They're taking money out for my food. Right. But living food. All we do is poo it out. What's the point? So, um, yeah, I, so I had a few little mishaps over the years. It's weird. But now, on my back, I had problems with my back, didn't I? So I was going for this thing when every time I took Vinny out, I would do press-ups. And for some reason, I, mean, I think personally I might have sprained something in my back because it was really painful for weeks. I couldn't do any exercise for weeks. But now, since then, I've done no press-ups at all, but I do do weights every time before taking them out, which is probably four times a day. So I do squats with weights. I've now got it up to 70. I was doing like 10 or 20 and then gradually over the weeks got it up to 70. Do that every morning. That's the first walk of the day. Second walk of the day, I do um, weights where I push up from sitting down. So like that's the exercise, shoulders and the back. And I do as many as I can of that. So I don't know, 30, 40, whatever reps. Um, and I do curls so i do probably 30 plus curls that'd be the next time and the fourth time i'd probably do what would i do the fourth time like a different curl maybe a side curl or uh do do just to do a different exercise so they're the three main ones i do and i do that every day and it's they're going up the the reps I know that um, 
with a lot of weight training how I was taught you know as a kid is you do like uh, you do sets so you do a set of 10 you do another have a rest do another set of 10 have a rest and do another set of 10 I just do as many as I can and then I stop and then I go out that's just what I do so it just the thing is, when I'm doing it, Vinny's hassling me because he knows that it's time to, you know, depart from the building for a W A N W A L K, and he, he's honestly he's like in my face when I'm trying to do the do the weights, and I mean, they're not heavy weights, but I'm sure I really don't want them to drop on in. I wouldn't want one dropped on my foot. And that has happened before, believe it. <laughs> Obviously, Mr. Accident Prone. Wow. Another time, and talk a bit about being accident prone. I, I'm not, I don't want to think of myself as being accident prone, but me, I've had so many accidents over the years. I, there was this kid that was, I was counselling in the school. So I used to go into schools, counsel the kids. It wasn't really, they didn't class it as counselling, it was more emotional support. But, you know, so it was different, but I was I was a counsellor. And they only gave the job to counsellors. So, kind of one of those, like, it's not counselling, but we'll only employ counsellors to do it. So I was doing that, and there was this young lad, he wanted, he wouldn't talk to me for the first one and a half sessions just sat there complete silence and then eventually he started to open up and we were talking and he he was excited to bring because he was getting a scooter like a you know push scooter things he, this is a long time ago uh, 2011 2000 whatever 10 11 something like that 12 11 and he wanted me he wanted to show it to me so he came in and said i've got my new scooter can i show it can i um can i show it to you do i have to can I ask a teacher to get, get permission to show it to you and i said you don't need to teach us permission we can do anything we want we can go anywhere in the school we go outside we can play football anything you want to do i don't know if that's true but that's what is that is what i did um if the kid wanted to go outside and sit down especially for the summer and draw some pictures or if they wanted to have a kick around with a the ball then that's what we'd do you know it's, it's more fun than just sitting sitting there because that isn't really what kids want to do they don't want to just sit there at a table or in a chair they I kind of realised while I was doing it that sometimes all it took was just an opportunity an opportunity for them to express themselves and it might just be one sentence it might be about their parents or it might be about whatever but just one thing they want to say but they can't say it in any other situation and yeah it's quite powerful I was surprised anyway this this kid he he had this scooter. Bloody, he's probably about twenty-five now, but he was—he was quite one of the older ones. He was about twelve, and he yeah, probably is about twenty-five, twenty-six. So he, we went down to see his scooter, and this was not a summer's day. This was cold, so it was kind of a more of a sort of wintry kind of period. And he was like showing it to me. And he said, do you want to go? I said, yeah, all right, cool. I literally put my foot on it. And I'm over. I literally, only, I touched it with my foot and I was on my back. Now, luckily, I, I don't think I bashed my head. I think my back's quite big, so that my head can't kind of reach the ground. 
when my back hits the floor um, because it's just like it's, it's kind of like when I lay down it's like I've got a mattress with me all the time big fat mattress <laughs> I'm not painting a good picture of my so if there's any women out there that or <laughs> let me know if you're interested the smelliest toenails you'll ever <laughs> no I haven't I don't know I can't smell them there was a time when I used to be able to bite my own toenails those days are well gone a long time ago I just remember doing it it's like it was one of those things you do it because you can because you know that I don't know I think we instinctively know that maybe it's not going to last forever and adults you never see an adult doing that usually it's a little bit like sitting down in front of the TV or laying down in front of the TV on the floor that's something that I haven't done in decades and decades and decades no 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 I mean, not only do I need help getting up, I need help getting down as well. I need at least two people to help me to get onto the floor, and then maybe four to get up again. Or a tractor or something. <laughs> I've actually lost weight, so I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm, you know. <laughs> Although, I sent off the hereditary DNA test thing that I got a couple of weeks ago. I sent it off yesterday I think or the day before and I also uh, I had to do a um, a bowel test basically it was sent to me in the post usually it's over 60s get sent these and now they've included really young people like me to do it now I I wasn't sure what kind of test that they wanted to do I mean what I am in itself how do you do it by yourself I think they only do it. Are they self, self? They send self-testing ones in, so that the doctors haven't got to do it. I think because it's grim. But anyway, I I did it very hard to aim. I mean, it's a tiny little tube. It's so hard to aim it. But ugh, anyway, it's done. I still get flashbacks. It's done now. And. You know, you read the instructions. You have to read the instructions before you... When you get these tests, it's like... I had two tests that I had to do. Bodily bodily things I had to send back. Read the instructions. That's all I can say. Because if I hadn't read, I would have got at least one comeback saying... You don't need your semen. As, you know, that that, that is where I was going with that so I just I figured that's the best way to do a DNA test but uh, I really I was just ugh. so I got it done sent them both out and I'm thinking you know what I'm quite hygienic you know I wash my hands so many times before, during, after, you know what I mean, everything. And I mean, again, I didn't read it properly. Apparently you can use toilet roll to catch it. <laughs> anyway, I, so I washed my hands. How many, I mean, you put it, you put it, <laughs> you put it. I'm not trying to be grim. I'm just, I'm just, you put it, <laughs> you put it. 
put it into the container and the box there and you send it you put it into the post box from my experience of being male or should we say it's going to sound bad spending time in public toilets no that sounds wrong but i've been into male sharing male men boys men's toilets since i was a kid you know all through school college um workplaces you know so there's there's lots of different times i've i've done that had to and it ain't a great place they ain't the best places in the world and the hot taps not used that often soap and water it, it, honestly it's it's amazing it's amazing i mean when i was at college doing my degree you'd be lucky to find to see anybody wash their hands when they came out of cubicles i mean i wasn't doing a survey you know i'd have got kicked out you know we've noticed you've been standing around for six hours watching them the men come in and, and go out of the toilets uh no it wasn't anything like that but i clocked it i do like notice like and i'm not i'm not the kind of person to say anything because yeah i don't do confrontation and also i don't have any right to tell anyone else what to do plus i don't wash my own hands <laughs> no i do i do i do usually no i do i do yeah but it's just oh so yeah the fact that it goes into the mail i'm starting to think when i open mail in the future i'm washing my hands even if it's just a, a bank statement i'm just ugh. i'm glad they say to put it into the because there was a, a box that it came in i didn't realize that was the same little container like the box like envelope box thing that it gets sent back in i thought i was just going to stick the tube into the into the letterbox and imagine if i forgot to put the lid on so yeah that that yeah they didn't do that though that's good so that would be i mean i don't i'll be honest um i kind of don't want the results of that because that's that stuff scares me <sighs> but the dna test very excited about that well I'm interested. I am excited. I'll be interested. Uh, to be fair, now that I've got rid of that Patreon and I got back to being me, I can be me again. And I'm just making a recording and talking rubbish, and it's good. I've got a lot of things to look forward to this week. I'm looking forward to getting the course, getting stuck into it, and really, you know, taking it seriously how it needs to be because you know i've been given an opportunity to do this it's been financed by the student i know it's a student loan and i i have to pay it back at some point but it's still a great opportunity to get a chance to do a second degree especially i don't not especially at my age but it's it's an opportunity and I'm, I've got, I need to start grasping it. And also things of, I think now with the website, it's pretty much complete. There's still stuff to do, but that's, it's not important to do it. You know, there's lots of things that need to, that need to be changed and stuff, but ultimately it's not really that important. I can just, as long as when I make a new recording, I do all the different versions, I put them where they need to go, upload them, make them available to download for free, make them available on the different podcasts that they need to be on, and that's done. So it's a few hours work, and then it's done. And I suppose eventually it will be 
like before it'll just be all the latest stuff that people listen to and the old stuff will just be forgotten like it usually is but I think at the moment some people are still listening to some of the older stuff and because it went off the main podcasts as far as like on Spotify and um, Apple Music Apple Podcasts rather so now it's maybe it's thrown people off a little bit but that stuff is still available. So if anyone was listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever and they were listening to their stuff with music, it's still still it's not there, but it is still available. You just need to go to my Facebook group to to find the you have to just you have to become a member to find it's free to become a member, it's not not expensive. It's zero charge it's a second of your time um yeah so q and a Q&A friday tomorrow tomorrow so that would be good uh, is it weird that i think that's my favorite one of the week I think it is. I think it's it's the favourite one. I did a little uh, poll on the Facebook group, and I think that one came out top. But I think Boring Objects is also another one that's fairly uh, liked. So I'll get back to that. I don't know if I'm going to call it Monday Boring Objects. I might just call it Sleepy Boring Objects, like it used to be called. And... I'll add it to the Sleepy Boring Objects podcast because I've got 30, I think I have 31 recordings on there. So I might just add that to that podcast. Then also add it to the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast as well and to the other, just so that you can, wherever you go, basically it's there. And yeah. It's just, it'll be, I release it every Monday. So I guess, I mean, does it have to have the title Monday in it? It doesn't even rhyme, does it? Like, at least Trivia Tuesday. That kind of, well, doesn't rhyme, but it's a similar, you know, T. T, 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 T. You know, Tuesday, Trivia. I'll say the word properly in a minute. Trivia. Tuesday. Oh. So we've got Q&A Friday. Oh, and if, if you're still awake, if you've got any questions, please, um, again, my Facebook's uh, page is the place to go to to ask me questions there. Um, what else? Yeah. It's just Vinny's all fast asleep. Absolutely gone completely oh i said your name didn't i i'm sorry mate as soon as i said his name he woke up go to bed sleep go to bed sleep go to bed sleep good boy go to bed sleep good boy one eye's got one eye open the other one's closed and like uh go to bed to sleep calm close your eyes that's it back so this coming week so this Thursday today oh Big Brother started <laughs> Big Brother started on Sunday oh I love Big Brother so I've been watching it every night so it's Sunday to Friday which is good for me because Saturday you know it's not every Saturday but it's boxing on uh, especially this time of year, it's a, a fairly regular on a Saturday. So I've been watching that. The so I got tomorrow is oh it's Thursday. I should be doing healing Thursday, shouldn't I? Maybe what I'll do is. 
this is just a catch up. I just had to do a catch up because it just feels like I've it's been forever since I did a recording. It's really strange. I mean, I've gone week well, I don't know weeks, but I've gone a fair bit of time in the past about doing one recording and three days it's not a lot is it really not really when you consider i did sunday papers and that was released monday morning and it's now thursday afternoon so it's not exactly like a long time ago uh What did I see recently that I found very interesting? Uh, I heard something that really I liked this I liked it. It was a saying but I've forgotten it. And that's not the saying. It was a saying about memory. About remembering things, but I can't remember what it was. That wasn't it either. Obviously, I can't remember what it was. Wouldn't be a saying about memory, would it? Oh, uh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Repetition, apparently. So, I, I've been, um, even though I've not been doing my coursework for the first week, I'm still listening to audiobooks on psychology. So I am like absorbing that stuff. I'm re re repetitively listening as well. And yeah, just hearing about some of the, the early people in uh, psychology like Piaget, uh, Skinner, and just people like that. And the there was a thing with, the, is it rhesus monkeys? forget the name of the person but he put some monkeys basically put these little baby monkeys in with two different places one was well first way did it where they had one mother that they would they weren't real but like they were fake monkeys one was just made of metal but it had a had a bottle of milk so the monkey could feed the other one was really cosy, had skin, fur, and it was really cosy, but no food. And the monkeys would spend most of the time with the one that was warm, or the one that was cosy and soft, as opposed to the, the cage, which kind of makes sense, really. And then they did another experiment. They just did have their, their drink, their milk, and then they go back. So that, that kind of makes sense that that would do it. So it's like, they prefer that over the one, but that one's got, they take what they need and they go back. And then what they did is, with different monkeys, they put some monkeys together, two different uh, places, two different cages, I suppose. One had the, the cozy monkey with some milk. The other one had the metal, the cage, you know, monkey the I don't know what it's made of but sort of mentally kind of stuff and but that also had milk as well the monkeys in the comfortable one they were drinking the milk and cuddling up and they were happy and they they kept them in and they grew up to be happy and you know the monkeys over like this is over like maybe some few weeks or months I don't know how long they did it for but the ones in the cage monkey, the one with like the, I'm not sure. I've got this little image that is sort of made of metal and, but it's still got milk. So they're still drinking the milk and they're still getting fed, still can do anything they want. They also grew up. But when, when there was... When there was an alarm, let's say the the they tried to fright this is I know this it's not nice, but they sort of frightened the monkeys, like bashing on the cage or whatever loud sound. 
with the monkeys with the with the soft one, the soft mother, the fake mother, they would cuddle up there for safety. With the metal monkey, the wired monkey, they would uh, be on the floor rolling, rolling around, just rocking, holding their head. So it just shows it's interesting that because there used to be a they they did this a person who did this studying he did it because he was taught and the belief at the time when he was studying or he became a psychologist was that babies needed mother needed the parent for food and there was a time when babies were left but when a baby was upset they'd just be left on their own and like just ignore them and bearing in mind this is quite a long time ago they did this study my accent changed then did you notice that quite a long time ago a time ago in a study in tech and it changed a lot of the way that things like midwives, uh, nursery people, things people at children's homes, places like that would treat the kids. They realised that actually they needed physical comfort. It wasn't just about getting fed. And... That's what they learnt from the monkeys. So he changed society in parts of the Western world. This uh, psychologist, I forget his name now. So I've heard about this experiment, blimey, decades ago. I didn't really take much notice of it. It made sense to me anyway, because comfort is something that a baby obviously needs. I mean, skin-to-skin -skin contact is important for a newborn baby. For both the mother and for the father, just to, for that baby to be against your skin. Because that's how they can bond and it's it's an important thing to do. It doesn't mean that you're supposed to walk around a hospital naked. But, you know, just... <laughs> Stick the baby down your top. I don't mean like that either, but it is important to have that skin on skin touch. Like it is if you're in a relationship with someone as well, isn't it? It's just it's quite an intimate thing to do. But in a in a I suppose for a parent and a child, it's a bonding thing. Because basically they are your skin, they are your blood, they are you know, you've got two parents, fifty percent of your DNA. You own 50% 50, 50 of them. <laughs> but that's how my dad used to say it. I own all of you. I own you. Get in the garden. Get digging. I should let it go. So I... Yeah, it's amazing. But what I did notice, though, over the years, is... It doesn't matter if it's the parent or not. In a sense, babies need to be held, they need to be cuddled, they need to be nurtured. And it doesn't matter who's doing it, really, in a way. You know, it doesn't have to be a biological person. They just need, they just need love, just humans need love. Like monkeys, like the one, I, my little monkey here just needs love. I mean, I didn't give birth to him, I didn't poo him out. But, did I, Vinny? <laughs> Thankfully, not the size of his teeth. He was so cute when he was a baby. Well, not when he was first born, because he looked... I don't know, he looked like something you'd flush down a toilet. He looked, you know... I don't mean that horribly, but... it There weren't nothing cute about him when he was, like, first born. He was just like... This is like a, a blob. But within like uh, two weeks, 
he developed like he had this he had a face and these little fat arms and legs it's weird it's like his legs and arms were out of proportion with the rest of his body and now he's got really thin legs and arms and he grew his nose his nose was like really stump like on his face and that kind of grew You hear what he says, it still won't be, still not as long as yours. That's rude, Finny. We should just stop that stuff. You don't have to be rude. I know, but I like it. I like it a lot. I've oh, got boxing. Boxing's on on um, Saturday. It's the big one, baby. It's back in um, Dubai. And it's Bivol against Biot- Bietabev. And also the rematch with um, Fabio Wardley. And what's his name? And also the Cruiserweight World Championships on as well. So this is, yeah, there's other fights, but then three fights alone. But I mean, that. I'm excited about the first two I mentioned, the rematch. Uh, Fabio is one of my favourite heavyweights, and that fight they had was one of the best fights I've seen. Like full stop, one of the best, one of the best heavy fights I've ever seen. So there, and then the cruiserweight, the, the light heavyweight championship is for all the belts. Both undefeated. Bivol, he beat both. He, he beat it's Zerzo. This is Zerzo. He could, but he also beat Canelo first. And then Zer, so two really big fighters. But Canelo, he beat Canelo. It's very hard to bet against anyone that can beat Canelo. And the other bloke, Better Biev. All of his fights have been by knockout. All of his wins have been by knockout. It's just, yeah, it's... This, to me, this is more exciting than the Hagler Hearns. But probably because at the time of Hagler Hearns, I wasn't really that aware of them. I was, I'd followed them a little bit. Briefly, only for like a couple of years, that I became interested in Hagler and Hearns, and I'd heard about them, but I never really got to watch their fights because they won at night, and I didn't have my own TV. But when I was about fourteen, I think I got my my TV, uh, black and white TV I had, and I could watch boxing, I could watch stuff that was on late at night or. Uh, even just a boxing review show, you know, about what's been going on. And that's when I really got back into boxing. Really loved it when I was 14. And the whole build-up, because Hagler and Hearns were both fighting other people. And the whole thing was, if they get through that, if they both win their their individual fights, they would then go on to match up and fight each other and they were both stars I mean some would argue that Hearns was a much bigger star because he'd gone through the weights and he'd he'd already had a he'd already had fights with um, yeah Leonard Dory, he'd lost to Leonard but he had fights against uh, Roberto Duran. And he it's quite weird that... Against Roberto Duran, Leonard lost to Roberto Duran. And then Leonard was just playing with him in the second fight, in the rematch. And Duran says, no mass and no more, basically. Because he was fed up. Leonard wasn't hurting him he just had enough because Leonard he just wouldn't 
he didn't want to fight someone that didn't want to fight. He wanted to have a proper punch up. And Leonard was just like keeping away from him and he got frustrated. And there's a lot of showboating and stuff like that. And so, yeah. But when Hearns, but yeah, and then Hagler fought Duran, couldn't put him down. Didn't didn't win. Like Hagler won, but he couldn't couldn't hurt him. But Hearns fought Duran, knocked him out. It's weird, isn't it? So Duran fights all the other three, or the other two rather, and but then Hearns fights Hagler, gets knocked out. Hearns fights Sugar Ray Leonard, gets knocked out. Hagler fights Sugar Ray Leonard after knocking out Hearns and going a distance with Duran and gets beaten by Leonard on points. Why they never had a rematch, I'll never know. I think he retired. I think Leonard just retired again. And then he came back, decided he wanted to win the light heavyweight title from Don Lalonde, I think it was. Danny Lalonde. Sounds like a cabaret singer. Welcome to the stage for one night only, Danny Lalonde. Doesn't it? It sounds a bit quite show busy. Lalonde. Anyway. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So, I've been following both their careers for years now. More so with Bivol. You know, ever since he, he beat Canelo, that was like, wow. I think I'd seen the previous fights of his and there's something about him is a look on his face. He is super serious. Never seen him smile. Super, super serious person. When he's, you know, it's all work to him. And yeah, that's, I find it quite fascinating. And then Better Beer, because that's all smiley. Like in some of his interviews, even though he's an absolute KO artist. Very strange, the whole thing. So that's good. And Fabio against... Um, why has Joseph Parker not had any fights? Dread no one wants to fight him now. Because Joseph Parker beats Zhang... And he beat Wilder in his last, I think they would last his last two fights. Zhang and Wilder. I mean, which was an amazing thing. To, you know, he did. He beat them both. Yet, he hasn't had an opportunity to fight for a world title. Yet, Dubois, well, I mean, he... I just, the people that he beat, it, Miller and then, um, I forget his name, but what, why did he get first shot at the world title, but Parker didn't? I'm glad he did, because, well, he didn't get shot, he got given the world title, and then defended against Anthony, it's Anthony, but some parts of the world call him Anthony. Just because it's a TH doesn't have to, you haven't got to pronounce a th. It's Anthony. Anthony, not Anthony. What's the other um, word, um, the other name that's pronounced wrong? Oh, what's that big dog? A dog with like the whiskey ba barrel. Um. Oh, apparently, if you can't think of something, a name, don't spend too much time trying to think of it. Because apparently that's, that's not necessarily good for your memory. So just let it go. If it's not important, you can Google it, look it up. Because there have been times in the past when I've been, well, with my friend that lived downstairs. And we'd be trying to remember something. 
maybe a person's name or maybe an event and what was it what what country was it what what, what year was it Ugh. and it has been ages and it was probably a 10 second search on the phone to get the answer but we'd both be like no don't want to search i want to want to use my memory I want to use I want to tap into my memory waste of time you know what i did the other day i was in a hurry and uh, I've I've got a set way of doing things. I do things in a certain order. And on this occasion, I did things in a completely different order. And I was rushing around, which is not a good idea for me to do. I don't work well rushing. I have to take my time and focus on what I'm doing. It's just the way I am. And when I go out, I usually have some mouthwash and go to the toilet, whatever, if I'm just going to pop out, just make sure that I look okay and everything. I picked the mouthwash up, I drunk out of it. Like I do, because normally, I was rushing, I do that, and I have some water, then I go out. I drunk, honestly, not a lot, but it's like, ah, uh, it was lovely. No, it wasn't. It's like, what the heck? I just, just, why? I've never drunk mouthwash before. I use it, you know, squish it around. Hope for the best. I don't, you know, just drink it. Blimey. So, yeah. That's kind of it, really. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. The eviction night is on Friday for um, Big Brother, the first eviction night. And then Saturday, the boxing probably starts at four, three or four in the afternoon. And really. I need to start looking at the Open University website and start to start some studying. That's what I really need to start me doing. I do, I do, I do. I haven't received any emails yet saying like, are you, where are you? Are you going to start then? Are you going to start doing something? So yeah, I do. Oh. I think we just woke up. That was weird. Are you okay, Vin? I don't know if you maybe was having a bad dream. You just woke up, like, startled. Wow, bless him. So, yeah, that's it, really. So, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. I will do Q&A Friday tomorrow. If you've got any questions, then just go to the Facebook group. I have asked a question, if anyone's got any questions. I think I've got three or maybe four so far. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself because you do deserve to be happy. And also to say thank you to the person, I think it's Samantha, who did join on Patreon, but so I've refunded that, but... Thank you, it was very kind of you for joining. And sorry for messing anyone about over that whole thing. So, to ra for now. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel
karma now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace. But also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice Maybe in a few hours' time, perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I, sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from... We're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualisation. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was the person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful, and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button, in fact it might have even been a tape, tape recorder, I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words, because I had them memorized, really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down now now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis 
and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze, even though they're may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now and as you become aware of your hands I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now and when it comes 
comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. And it's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. have noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever 
whatever I imagine. My breathing improving. When I've got my eyes closed. I tend to visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. It feels nice. to, if nothing else, just take in some time, away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has 
has slowed down. Slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs The feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body, further and deeper. to soon, the feelings in the back of your neck, The 
feelings in your wrists. muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. So very slow. stomach peaceful in your stomach Notice how relaxed. 
relaxed. You now feel in the whole of your back. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. your knees, Spread in those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. All the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go.
vorstellen. Mind. This wandering away. So tranquil. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more Enjoy the space, this space of peace and safety.
letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of Complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Drifting. Drifting. Peaceful. Energy.
not have noticed. Your mind drifting. Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace. Total peace.
body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy, which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of 
comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind, almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together. almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness. And it feels nice. It really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself To feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it, it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment, this is the world. I live in the countryside, so there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even 
more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck, focus in on the back of your neck, letting go any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back, down to your lower back. As you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently 
gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting and in your lower back there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort that spreads into your hips so down your lower back into your hips into the area where your coccyx are and into your buttocks and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area start to melt start to really let go and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders your back and your spine Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And they're feeling. Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. The feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. Healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message. 
message. Into your arms. And you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread all the way into your wrists, your forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time. Focusing. a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar
fingertips. to the front of your body muscles in your thighs your knees Muscles and your shins completely
Letting go of everything. So I'm going to start counting down now. From 20 down to 1. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen.
sustain. Fourteen. Thirteen.
eight. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. Your eyelids, the muscles. 
muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now Focusing on your eyes, you're going to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now.
보내주시고 So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body, before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space now. Seven, six, five. Three. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. how much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem, sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. If you move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort but as you focus on your knees regardless of how your knees feel you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you you can still have that attention on your thighs maybe notice how your thighs feel maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply as you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. It supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And it's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles, they didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. They're to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs but the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. Fold in between your legs. You can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. Doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with the 
your idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension. Just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly. Your knees, your calves, your ankles, the strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible. Absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone. Still a lot of weight, these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As a in fact, my whole legs do. My feet, feet also go, whew, and my toes clap. I'm so happy. legs really are amazing and I know that the talk about, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. And as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax and the more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each.
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. slow and peaceful six slowed right down sink in deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you 
may notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number those thoughts will become more Starting with number seven.
around you now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing Focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. that your mind is starting to drift Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your No. 
starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Generally thinking about stuff. You 
take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. We're left with a real sense of peacefulness. which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where Everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself. where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. And that sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins. Traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. And not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment. But also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have 
the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before. As you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including of course your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in It's the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life. And you know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born, not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. But it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's very, very easy. 
because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. 
negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm, with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des- doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just be let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. can continue to relax, if you choose you can drift to sleep, with every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty.
This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you, the focus on those parts of your body 
focus increases. Which actually calms your mind. Pushing out stress and tension, healing all the parts of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. And when your brain fills relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and it may start listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also Is by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission for your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command to your body. drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need and the 
as I focus on the different parts of your body, and they start to just drift, and then you come back again, and you hear me talking and, and focusing on a different part of your body. yourself drifting, but you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. Because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep, and that's the last you remember, until you wake up, and you are in time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you, if you want to do, and if you do, sleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, healing sleep, and it feels so Feel that healing energy spreading through you, relaxing you so deeply. Relaxing your soul 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they almost seem to just melt into one. your right hand start and your left hand end, almost as if they just mix together. Now focusing on your knees, just noticing how your knees feel. on your elbows, focusing in on both of your elbows, just observing the feeling of your elbows. sensations in your ankles,
entire body feels. Noticing how your mind feels now. go letting go letting go letting go letting going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently, maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face, just so you can feel my hands, so you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands G 
gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. Moving to the muscles of your shoulders.
and maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table just to give you a little bit of a stretch but very gently and you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders the sides and the back This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. You can feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly. It can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. And what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. I don't want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger. 
someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and then do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. so comforting now just rest your left arm back down and start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we would have been, that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving down. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want. a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, and yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, and you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down. To your lower back. You can do that a few times. So 
sometimes people use the knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine almost just push down go all the way down to the bottom of the spine each time releasing tension and opening up the body stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, and you're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, or to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now I'm going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands 
forward over and mess it massage in that area up to your spine from the side of your body up to your spine so some of that massage area the muscle tissue uh, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from the chest so it's all connected the chest and the back connect together so we're going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine and then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing as gentle or as deep as you choose now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down including your lower your middle of your back to your thighs the backs of your thighs and the sides of your thighs starting with your right leg massaging the back and the sides of your thighs gently and firmly there's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area then working down to your calf muscles massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose using both hands Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. In the back of your back of your ankles. Just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot massaging the bottom of your feet sides of your feet gently but firm enough 
so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having a feet massage to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle, stretching your toes gently. Massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs. Working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down, and this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging, so perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area, as you move down to your calf muscles, Massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently. Moving down your ankle and into your feet. Massaging the backs of your feet, bottoms of your feet. Stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually. And that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And 
just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. moving down from your neck down to your chest starting by massaging the very top of your chest where the collarbone is either side of the collarbone Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. It gives us quite a large area. You can move from one side to the next. Moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. So you're going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, to feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, from just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side. Gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your 
belly button. And then move round to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. Free. There's something about having the stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now massage your stomach front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button, and going the other way around, there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. So now move down the tops of your thighs, your muscles, massaging them. And I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, in front of your thighs. Gently massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, put the pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go. Enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deep. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy. going to 
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. that candle in front of you and I'd like you to actually physically <sighs> gently blow that candle out just <sighs> this is not a big Blow, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish. And then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out. As we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. If you need to sleep, you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel sounds where you are, you be aware of those sounds for the moment, and you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant. Where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, there's Hollis the pigeon, he likes to say hello 
sometimes. And you see a plane that goes by. You see traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. So simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a Activity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding. Starting. Eight. 
two, five. Ten, eleven, ninety four.
those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say-so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like, like a breath of relief. Oh, I feel like I'm more relaxed. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past. Where you get home and you just sit down in a chair. Maybe you kick your shoes off and that, oh feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two, and it feels blissful, and just by sitting down like that, the body knows it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. And your mind, you're prepared to let go of everything. And just completely allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate and 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you choose to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, deeper, and you may find that the more you relaxed, you feel that your mind starts to wander. Maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else. And then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not, may not actually be aware of what we need. Maybe physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all with the feelings of such relaxation. It's, it feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. and relaxation.
breathing out any excess feeling or tension or stress in every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things are to a standstill or maybe just much, much slower than before because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know you're feeling completely calm, loose and positive benefits for your body and your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair that you have glistens. focus from the inside of your scalp where your crown is, you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain relaxing deeply. And as your crown continues to to the rest of your body and your mind to relax even more deeply relax even more completely they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling
these ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body. Body scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice 
to gain touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So I'm going to start off by focusing on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. you to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit, opening and closing the hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, and opening your toes gently. feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows as it stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes. Scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs, I'm going to just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, and noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. to the back of your neck, just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, so as you focus on the back of your neck, If you were looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down. Perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left. But only 
sensations of the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now as we now focus on the tops of your on those parts, the tops of your arms, and we like to just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly, so we're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever. above your groin, and we are able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly, if that is a difficult thing to do, then maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how
noticing how your tongue and mouth feels. And that may help by moving your tongue around your mouth, moving it to the left, maybe pressing it gently against the side. it up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth. Always very slowly and very, very gently. Just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion very gently and slowly. Just slowly moving feel. sensations in you currently experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, again Just above your hips, where your coccyx lies, and the whole area, which also really does include the sides of your body, because those muscles are very much connected. Muscles also move into your hip area and then into your buttocks, the sides of your hips, and if you're physically able to do so. side to side, just 
Sina.
Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space? that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body can be 
begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. particularly concerned, just noticing what your body is telling you. The feelings in your arms, instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the, all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling, maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling, you know, that's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. Course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. And of course
increase that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. sometimes, like right now actually, I'm going to focus on that part. I'm going to focus on my buttocks and then I focused on my, the middle of my back. It almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently. Just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along and it feels in your chest just noticing what sensations you Experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously, there's the collarbone leading to the chest, got the chest bone, you've got the muscles chest. And of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well, mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest. But at the side, underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. feeling there is in your chest. And when I notice that I focus on my chest, I, I feel it in my, my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. In. And then it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels... It feels okay. A little bit of pain in my right chest. Just a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. 
I don't know. Notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up, which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas in your back. Looks quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a, uh, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when you're relaxing or deeper. That's something we were taught. yourself. As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peaceful is your mind right now. With nothing to think about, and just my voice to listen to, because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down, to your body. that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect to happen. For relaxation.
do poder. as if you are moving further away from the body and the mind, just leaving that there, kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know, and it's that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe, free, and continue. Focusing on the feeling of those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one. listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine something different maybe started to almost move into some kind of a dreaming state
the same. Between. 
physical sensation. Most life is a magnet outside of your head, sucking attention and stress and all your remaining feelings that you don't want, sucking them out through your skull. Just emptiness, but space. A place full of fresh air. A place where you can stretch. It's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility, growth, as it moves from one to two, to more than to one, your mind just feels exactly how sensation that you'd like to keep, a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all, to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1 and this is something that you can do yourself just for a few minutes, close your eyes, just count slowly from ten down to one, and you experience these feelings. into every part of your body, travels from the blood stream, healing and relaxing every part of your little existence. this at all times, before the end of the recording, and then you can practice on your own, each time you count from ten down to one, the feelings of comfort and calmness and 
missing how you physically feel having counted down from 30 to 1 allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes and as you focus on your fingertips maybe they feel a little bit tingly which is understanding that this is when the tension has been exiting your body through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again. This time you're going to feel relief of tension and stress and the anxiety that you may have. almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from the navel to just above your chest just below your chest area so it's surrounding your body that area and for the whole area you can feel the tension of your body whatever's left just releasing from that area and you may notice that your stomach is focus just do a little scan of your body just noticing how that is there focusing on your upper body your back your chest stomach legs navel hands feet just noticing Choose your time to 
the effect of eyes on the status of the important individuals something more and more possible almost as if you were in the night you were looking um, at the world so the um, <laughs> Zorro or something you know the kind of night it covers your eyes but it also covers quite a lot of the you're focusing in that area that's the area that you know is going to release tension or stress in your mind. Your brain and your mind and any tension that you may have had with an area in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes, in your forehead, and in your scalp. Eventually any tension keeping your head down and keeping your
I'd like you to make up your mind who you're going to marry this year. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide who you're going to marry this year. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that I guess it is a command really isn't it when you're telling yourself who it is and you get into a bit further now that only you can really tell yourself in that way and I don't know how someone else saying to you you know what relax relax need to be gentle but you can't someone else can't really have the same the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality over how you feel because when you say to yourself mind and your body listens to what you say say for example we'll test it out we'll do a little test do little tests along the way and we can get more of an idea of the thought the positive thought that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind how quickly just by you telling yourself relax so I'm going to start by let's, let's focus on your hands so we'll focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax so just say relax focus on your hands. You could say, my hands are relaxed, or I want my hands to relax. And I think if you actually do it directly, by focusing and imagining that your hands kind of feel the sky at the moment, they've got little ears up in the top of their head. So talking to your hands just say relax noticing how your hands start to relax now focus on your Tell your eyes to relax. So just say in the same word, relax. Now find the right tone for you. So now I might say, relax. So you, you might say, relax. Or relax. So you know, you, you might say it differently to yourself. And that's important you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, the eyebrows, and just tell your eyes directly, relax.
we've got our save and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different apps and the apps in your desktop creating a file and maybe that part doesn't load fully and what would happen is it would just take five ten minutes even days but what's happening with your eyes something else I noticed is when I started focusing on this I actually almost did find that I got worse before I got better in a way sort of that I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing so I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there that I wasn't I was focused on it but I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really actually feeling it freely and I am still continuing to relax as well as my hands actually my hands have got a certain kind of movement not, not spasm but a kind of feeling degree of energy in my hands and with that comes a tension of being relaxed and it's changing me the next part I think you could focus on the back of the neck that's a part that's quite often um, or for me holds tension I don't know about for yourself I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing it exactly what you're doing, as you're doing it as well. So I'm telling my body parts where I need to be. So if you carry your neck to the back of your neck, focus on the back of your neck, and you'll see sound loud or you can just say it to yourself internally but you're focusing and you're saying it literally to the back of your neck as if the back of your neck is tense it's tight it's what you say if you do that then you'll just say it relax to the back of your neck and you'll do the same though I'm focusing on the back of my neck other parts started to I don't know, show themselves to me or maybe I don't know maybe it's an anxious as well but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders tension in my shoulders and in my upper back whether that was because the back of my neck was saying I'm putting it too tight it's the other parts that are under tension but my lower my, my back of my neck is still relaxed but I'm just becoming more aware of other parts that are under the tension and this might have happened when it's not doesn't mean that it's going wrong, it just means you're being 
couldn't do that if we put in a kind of clock or something. Let's just do clock at the same time. Let's just tell the clock that I can start this at any moment. So it can start right at 4. Maybe you can see that.
all this stuff is to really focus on the whole of your body as being the important bit in your life. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. Just always remember that I'm here for you. notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily moving too much it's more for you and your situation at the moment it's that space Is that gap of calmness and comfort and relaxation? It's a nice feeling. It removes those stresses and discomforts, physical and emotional, and moves them. 